Hi everyone, today I'm going to record a quick demo of the latest 1.2 update to RapGen, including huge performance increases, self-collision detection, alongside many other user experience improvements. For newcomers, I'm going to showcase the basic functionality of how the generator works and then break down what each setting does in detail. So first things first, we need to append our generator. So for with the, with the blend file provided, go to the node tree and append wrap gen, and that will bring the generator into your scene. The next thing we're going to do is create a curve, and I'm going to snap that to the volume. So now we have a curve inside of this arm here. Create a gener geometry nose generator, select wrap gen. And the first thing you see is that it spawns a bunch of these setup circles. So these are basically your intersection planes. It's important that these circles encompass the shape that you want to wrap to. If they're smaller than the object, it's not gonna give you very desirable results. It has to be slightly bigger than the object. And you can just select each point Alt S to increase the, the size of these particular circles. Okay, so with that set, we can exit out of setup mode and select our target mesh. And you can see right away, we have a bunch of these default ropes set up. So if we don't have our wrap mesh assigned, it will default to using a standard circular profile so we can increase and decrease the radius here uh, we can increase the the profile resolution and to control the spans down the length of the curves you have this wrap curve resolution so you can dial this up and down and this setting here is basically it controls the accuracy of the shrink wrap as well as the the divisions of the um, default uh, ropes. Great, let's set this back to 256 just for maximum um, accuracy and we'll set our radius down to maybe 0.5 something like that and we'll increase our count to 24 and let's add some random rotations here. Now right away you can see that it's looking a little janky and that's the reason for that is is because we have self collisions turned on so this will do its best to overlap over any um, straps underneath and give us some pretty physically accurate results uh, but doesn't always give you perfect results right off the bat so what you can do is you can change the seed and you can try and find uh, a um, a seed that works for you but let's just let's just say we're happy with this for now or oh, maybe another one let's just say we're happy with that so to fix these so it looks a bit more natural I've added in a control called the smooth curve iterations control and what this does is it basically just softens out the curves so you can see here when I slide this up everything just gets a bit more relaxed and a bit more natural and there you go you've got some really nice ropes going on and you can obviously increase and decrease the the radius and everything will update accordingly cool let's change this from a default rope to a custom wrap mesh so I'm going to change this to a just a rectangle here and you can see that it is oriented in the Z axis and it's pointing in the Y and that's really important so whenever you have a wrap mesh just make sure it's pointing upwards and just facing in the Y direction now these straps aren't exactly working too great with the self collision system just because they're so wide they're, you're always going to get some weird crashing going on so it may be best to just drop this down a little bit to 12 and it's doing its best but it's not doing a great job on these on these particular straps here so maybe we can take the wrap mesh scale down slightly 
and maybe we can introduce some offset random and that, that just basically randomizes uh, the offsets slightly just to prevent some of that um, Z fighting that you see going on here and there you go you've got some pretty decent straps going on here what you can do however is if the self collisions aren't working for you if your straps were quite wide and you don't like the crashing that's going on between them what you can do is you can turn off self collisions and instead you can solely rely on just the um, the offset random and you can change the seed of that too just to get some better some some more randomization and with when you're uniformly lifting them off the surface randomly you tend to avoid that that clashing so this could potentially work for that let's just change this down back to one so it's a different approach but it works quite nicely for things with quite thick straps great let's move on to our array mesh so right now we are arraying this particular section all along the curve here so that is why array mesh is enabled if I turn that off it's gonna completely break um, so what we want to do is if we wanted to for example take this entire object and wrap that around instead of using an, an array we take that off well first I'll assign it turn off array mesh and I'll just take this down to something more visible so we can see and let's take that down and so now you can see that this whole object has been stretched along the length of the curves being wrapped and that is basically the gist of wrap gen um, just to show you how versatile it can be let's just take this off for now just have the ropes and let's increase this to uh, whatever 15 and maybe let's enter setup mode again let's just move these increase the size of these something like that yep take that off uh, let's remove the smoothing and there you go you've just added wraps to this section and it's it's going to completely ignore any concave areas and it will wrap really uh, really nicely to your objects let's turn on self collisions and let's smooth these down a little bit nice so that is the gist of it um, shortly I'm going to go over every single one of these settings um, one by one in detail so you have a, a really in-depth understanding of what the, the generator is capable of all right let's go over these settings so the first setting that I want to go over is the guide curve subdivision level so if I just duplicate this up and just take that off for a second we've got our curve here if I subdivide that once twice it gets a bit smoother so essentially when I subdivide this twice and if this is set to two it's doing the exact same thing it's just softening out that curve there because I tend to prefer using poly curves than Bezier they're just easier to control and more predictable um, so it's up to you if you want to use Bezier that's absolutely fine uh, but it's just nice to have this control second the curve wrap curve resolution so as I said before this controls the default tube spans down the length but it also controls the accuracy of the shrink wrap that's taking place so I'll just remove the smooths here and if I set this to like 32 um, or rather maybe 64 and I drop that down 
eventually there's just not enough points to even snap to the object, right? So the higher your points are, the more accurate your shrink wrap and wraps will be. But if you're using a wrap mesh, obviously it's not going to affect the spans because it's it's just arraying that object. Um, but it's good to keep that in mind. Another thing that that setting affects is the smooth curve iterations. So if I smooth this, if I have a curve with 256 points on it and I smooth it a hundred times, you know, you can see the result. But if I drop this down to 64, that smooth does a lot more because it's, there's less points. So it's going to smooth a lot more aggressively. So these two settings kind of play in tandem with each other. I tend to leave it around 256. It's a pretty decent value for, for my purposes. But just keep that in mind. Obviously, we've got setup mode, which we've talked about before. It's important for these curves to just encapsulate the object that you want to uh, shrink wrap or create your wraps around. Uh, self collisions, we've talked about that. It's just being self aware of the other wraps. Um, wrap count, self explanatory. Target mesh, self explanatory, what we're wrapping onto. Align to normals. Now, this is an important one. So, I'm just going to take the blur normals down to zero for now. So out of the box, when we align to the normals, because this object is quite noisy, there's a lot of detail in it, it's it's um, creating quite a few issues. Just because as it tries to wrap around this, this you're going to get weird twisting going on. So if I take that off, you can see it doesn't align to anything. It's just kind of randomly twisting in all directions. It doesn't really care about the underlying surface. So you want to turn this off if you're wrapping circular objects such as ropes. So if I select this rope here and I go align to normals, you can see we're getting all of that twisting here, but it's just unnecessary. We could blur the normals, but if I just turn off align to normals it doesn't matter how this twists because it's just a circular profile whereas a rectangular profile it's important that it adheres to the surface below it so let's just turn that back to our strap for now and align to normals so it's aligning to the normals and because it's a really noisy object we can increase the blur normals and that is just going to soften everything out. So it's almost like we're smoothing this mesh underneath, we're smoothing the normals. And that's how you can get around those kind of situations. Most of the time when you're wrapping to a very smooth surface, it's not a setting that you'll need to use, but it's handy to have it there. All right, next setting, convex hull normals. Now, what this does is it converts your target mesh to a convex hull. So this is a convex hull. It basically removes all of the uh, concave areas. Now, this is really useful on objects like this because the normals are swooping around. They're going all over the place. We have huge negative spaces here and we have lots of wraps going over other wraps and you can see that just by aligning to the normals even if we smooth them I mean it, it, it is working but not that well you can see this is not the strap here is not aligning to that strap so you could get away with it but what I have introduced is a convex hull normals. So we've converted our target mesh to the convex hull. And you can see that things just work really well off the bat. There are some areas where the straps are twisting kind of strangely, but then you could just introduce a little bit of that blur normal. 
and you can see that that strap is aligning with the other strap underneath it quite nicely. So yes, on really complex target geometry, try tick on the, the convex hull setting. Really does help. So the next setting that we have not covered yet is the wrap merge threshold. So each of these sections here is an object which is just being deformed around the curve. So what we can do is merge them together. So if we set this to, let's say, 0 0.01, you can see that it is merging them. So we want to set this always to a very low value just to ensure that we don't merge unnecessary vertices. But when it's finished, it'll be one continuous mesh which has been merged together. So that is just the, the merge threshold. Default profile radius, we've been through that. Default profile resolution, been through that. Random rotations. Okay, so the next setting we have not covered is the offset. And this is just simply a global offset. It just globally offsets everything. By default, the curves will be perfectly on the surface. So if I just remove this, take it down to two or something. By default, everything will sit perfectly flush on the surface, but if you ever do need to sync this in or lift it up, that setting is there for you. Offset random, we went over this before. Uh, obviously it just offsets everything randomly. We can change the seed of that. And this tick box here is just including or excluding the ends because a lot of the time when you add this randomness, it can lift it off the surface but you want to generally hide the fact that things are lifted if they're super tight. The starting straps should generally be as tight to the surface as possible just to hide any uh, floating that goes on. Um, random cull. So this is a really useful one for just making things look a bit more organic. So maybe we'll tank this up to 48 or something. 32, we'll smooth that out a little bit. And if we randomly cull 0 0.5, that means 50% of them are gone. But it just it's it's good to have this because it adds some nice negative space, which uh, goes a long way in making it look a bit more organic. Curve twist, we can twist our curves. Shade smooth, just toggling the if it's um, faceted or smooth. And lastly, you can just set a material. And that pretty much covers RapGen 1.2. If anyone has any questions or suggestions or feedback, I'm always happy to hear it. Get in contact with me on um, Gumroad or, or Blender Market. Um, but yeah, enjoy. See you later.